This is the Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by OTC.watch, where investors go to find big data on small companies. That's OTC.watch. Subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews. Public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world. Here's your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm bringing back a returning guest. It's been a little while. Last time he was on the show was back of June of 2021. And I'm talking about no other than ESE Entertainment. Uh, their ticker symbol is ESE on the TSXV. And they also trade on the OTC, uh, the OTC uh, QX under the ticker symbol ENTEF. Revenues, profitability did increase across the entire company in the past year. We're going to talk about that. Not to mention in the last 18 months, they went from zero to $65 million run rate. Uh, their stock price is trading around 29 cents market cap, 34 million. Uh, this is my personal opinion. I'm entitled to it grossly, and I'll say that again, grossly undervalued. Uh, with us today is the CEO. He's going to bring us up to speed. Uh, and he is the founder and the CEO of the company, Mr. Conrad uh, Waselia. Uh, Conrad, welcome to the show. I appreciate you coming back. Yeah, thanks so much. Always excited to be back on the show. Uh, it's a little bit longer than I wanted to, but fired up to tell the story. A lot's happened. Congratulations on your run rate. Uh, you said you was going to knock it out of the park over the next year or so, and you did that. That being said, where is ESE Entertainment Financial's position like, certainly, and, and emphasize, if you could, a little bit on investors and, uh, and these levels? Yeah, absolutely. To your point, you know, we had just under a 16 million quarter, uh, which is annualized 64 plus million run rate, uh, which is just tremendous. I mean, we started from really under a few hundred thousand uh, in revenue. And now, you know, that 64 million run rate for the year, uh, just extraordinary growth. It shows you the scale of the market, uh, how efficient we've been. Uh, in addition to the great revenues, the last nine months were adjusted positive EBITDA, which is really the kind of feather in the cap. Um, not only are we growing, we're increasing margins uh, and we're getting close to profitability. So really exciting times for the company. Uh, and to your point, um, undervalued from a perspective of we're trading at half times revenue. Right. Uh, and typically... Typically, groups are trading three to five times right now, even in this uh, Absolutely. Tough market. So, I mean, you could do your own research, but it's pretty glaring of what an opportunity it is. What are some of your uh, ESE core customers and partnerships uh, to date? I've been uh, reading some of your press releases. Very impressive. You guys are pressing palms and signing deals. Bring us up to speed. Yeah, that, I mean, that's just as exciting as the revenue because along with the revenue comes new great partnerships and collaborations, some notable ones, uh, a partnership with Google that we announced a few months back. I mean, it doesn't get bigger than that. Uh, we also partnered with Opera. It's also a NASDAQ-listed company. Uh, then, you know, Electronic Arts, Ubisoft, Riot Games, all multi-billion dollar groups, all re-signing uh, for this year and beyond. So not only is it great to be partnered with these guys, but it's long-term deals uh, that are creating this stability and sustainability. You know, uh, I, I want to change gears here just for a second, get your personal opinion. ES Sports Growth, Canada, U.S., worldwide. Is this thing starting to explode? Oh, yeah. I mean, $268 billion revenue market size by 2025, 268 billion. I mean, I think that tells you everything. Uh, the amount of gaming developers that are trying to become the next electronic arts, there's 3,500 plus around the world. We currently work with 40 plus. I mean, the opportunity for growth here in the next three to five years is exponential. I think it's a generational opportunity. How do you guys make your money? Break it down for us. 
Yeah, it's actually really simple. And we worked on this internally to simplify it for our investors and shareholders and future shareholders. Very simply, game developers, such as Electronic Arts, they pay us to leverage our proprietary technology to acquire new players and new users onto their platform. So every time we bring on a new player or a new user to their existing platform or video game, we get paid. Uh, so it's a really simple, streamlined process. Of course, there's a lot of uh, tech, data, and, you know, AI kind of mixed in as our secret sauce. But if we bring users, we get paid. So it's performance-based, uh, and, you know, numbers don't lie. Nine straight quarters of growth. Yep. Uh, we're, clearly, we're clearly onto something big here. I want to break it down, if you could. Uh, explain the, the gambling part to it and the tournaments. Yeah, the iGaming Real Money betting uh, is just this huge blue sky opportunity for us. Um, a lot of groups have been reaching out to us asking, can you also acquire users onto our platforms uh, into the iGaming Real Money space? And the answer is yes. Uh, and we're testing that right now. Uh, we anticipate to roll out uh, our iGaming strategy this year, uh, but this is a really a big blue sky opportunity for us because uh, typically, you know, when you're acquiring a user in gaming, you know, you're charging one to ten dollars, but in iGaming, you could charge up to a hundred, even up to a thousand dollars per user. So, wow, uh, you can imagine the growth potential. If we're tracking 64 million now and we tap into that market, uh, we could really knock the socks off this thing. You guys recently did a, a non-broker deal. I, I know you've been taking a couple of tranches here and there, total of $2 million. Uh, could you bring my audience up to speed on that? Yep. Uh, we actually had the one final payment due for an acquisition we made. Uh, so we reached out to our existing shareholders uh, and and strong shareholders and said, you know, we got to make this payment. Uh, let's bring in a quick two million bucks, get that paid, so that we have a clean slate for 2023. Uh, and we executed on that. Uh, we closed it last week, uh, and now we're just ready to rock. Right? We have a clean slate for 2023, and we're going to get back on um, executing. And I don't want to jump the gun, but you know, our financials <laughs> come out. Our financials come out in 30 days, and Trust me, you could probably tell I got a smile on my face. Yeah, well, you know, that brings me to my last question. What type of news can investors expect from ESE? And what do you think the next six months uh, a growth or catalyst is going to look like? You know, with us, it's we're very fundamentally sound. We have been from day one. You know, key catalyst, you know, the financials are coming out in the next 30 days. Um, key partnerships and new partnerships already lined up for 2023. So the news flow is going to be robust. It's going to be coming very consistently. It's going to continue to tell a consistent story. Um, it's one of those deals where you look back and what I said happened, right? Uh, and I think we're in that same kind of inflection point where, you know, we're telling you that a lot of great stuff can happen. And, you know, my track record proves itself. Conrad, I'm going to give you the last uh, couple of words here. What is it that you want my listeners, your stockholders, to take away from today's interview? Just do a little bit of research. As I said before, we are trading at half times revenue. Yep. Our competitors are trading at three to five times in this market and upwards of 10 plus times when the market improves. I think that by itself uh, is just, an overwhelming yes of, you know, let's take a deeper look at this company. Uh, in addition to that, we are going to be very consistent with our news. So uh, you don't have to wait. Uh, it's going to be consistent. We're going to deliver. Uh, and it's just a great opportunity to get into the story and follow it. Company that we're highlighting here on Stock Day is ESE Entertainment. Take a look at them. You can find them on the TSX Venture under the ticker symbol ESE. If you're in the United States, they're on the OTCQX under the ticker symbol ENTEF. And uh, 
Conrad, I want to thank you for coming on the show. The only thing is I don't want to wait uh, another year for you to come back on the show. Hopefully you'll come back here in the next 60 days and uh, give us an update. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, following the story. I'm following the company. And I'm, uh, I'm just as excited as you are. Likewise. I love coming on and I'm really eager to get some more uh, U.S.-based investors follow the story. So please have a look at the company. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by La Jolla Media LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are for educational and research purposes. Stock Day encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional.